2-2, solving two-step equations. So our objective for this lesson is to solve two-step equations in one variable. And our essential understanding is that to solve two-step equations, you can use the properties of equality and inverse operations, just like we did with one-step equations, to form a series of simpler equivalent expressions. You could then, then use the properties of equality repeatedly to isolate the variable. So now what we're going to be doing is just instead of one operation to get the variable by itself, we're going to have two, right? Two-step equations. Then in the next section, we will have more. Okay. So a two-step equation like the one shown below involves two operations. So we have multiplication right there and addition right there. Okay. So to solve a two-step equation, the first thing you should do is identify the operations and undo them using inverse operations. You can undo the operations in reverse order of the order of operations. That's important. Okay. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the easiest way to solve two-step equations. Okay. So for example, to solve this equation right here, which we'll do in a second, we can use subtraction first to undo the addition and then use division to undo the multiplication. Okay? Because if we were going to evaluate this, if I say told you that x is equal to 2, the first thing you would do would multiply that by 2 and then add the 3 to your answer. So to solve this equation, we're going to do this backwards. We're going to do addition and subtraction first. We're going to undo this. Then we're going to undo the multiplication. Let's take a look at this. Okay? So here's the same problem. 2x plus 3 is equal to 15. So the first thing we're going to do is undo the addition by subtracting 3 from both sides. Okay? So the idea here is to focus on the variable right there and to get it by itself. So we have to get every other number out of there. We have to use, we have to do everything we can just to get the x by itself. Those two cancel, which was the point. And now we have 2x, bring down everything that we've used, is equal to 12. Okay, So now I have a 2 times x is equal to 12. In order to undo that operation, 2 times x, I'm going to divide both of these things by 2. Okay, Don't subtract 2, right? Divide by 2. We always do the inverse operation. Those two cancel, and x is equal to 6. Now, we don't have to do it that way, like I said. Okay, you could try to undo the multiplication first. So let's rewrite the problem first. Okay, now to undo 2 times x, I have to divide everything by 2. So if I divide this side by 2, I can't just divide that side by 2. I also have to divide the 3 by 2. So this is going to be x plus 3 over 2 is equal to 15 over 2. Subtract 3 over 2 from both sides, which gives me x is equal to 15 minus 3. That's 12 over 2, which reduces to 6. Same thing. The problem with doing it this way is it's easy to make a mistake with one of these, especially when you're dividing multiple terms by a number. Okay, and you're going to get, and we're getting fractions in this case. You're not always going to get fractions, but here we got fractions. Okay, we made the problem more complicated. Okay, we don't want to make the problem more complicated. We want to make it simpler with every operation that we do. So better to do this first and get a simpler, oh, not six, uh, to get a simpler equation on your second step rather than a more complicated one. Okay, so when you see it, when you see a two-step equation, right, the first thing you want to do is find the variable, okay, and go order of operations backwards. So add or subtract something to both sides, and then multiply and divide both something uh, else on both sides. Let's do our got it problem. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this over so I have some room. It goes t over two minus three. Okay, first thing we do, addition and subtraction. I see a minus three. Inverse operation is plus three. So that's 8 is going to be equal to t over 2. Well, t over 2, that's division. That's t divided by 2. So 
I multiply both sides by 2. Those now cancel, and we have 16 is equal to t. Okay, let's look at a word problem. You're making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in your town. You plan to use half a sheet of construction paper for each ad. You need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. You have 18 sheets of construction paper. How many ads could you make? Okay, so what do we know? We know that it takes half a sheet for each ad, and we also need five for the title. Okay, and all together, this is going to be 18. Okay, so when we want to make an equation for this, we have one half times a plus 5 is equal to 18. And there's my equation. Now to solve this, subtract 5 from both sides. So that's 1 half a is equal to 13. Now we have 1 half times a. Okay. I could divide both sides by 1 half, uh, but it's a little, you know, I want to try to you want to try to avoid dividing both sides by a fraction. Just multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. These now cancel out to give me A is equal to 13 times 2, which is 26. Okay. So same, let's try a got it problem. Same thing. Suppose you use a quarter of a sheet of paper for each ad and four sheets for the title banner. Okay, so my equation is pretty similar, but now we have a quarter times the number of ads plus four sheets is equal to, doesn't say the number of ads, uh, doesn't say you have a different number of construction paper, so it's still going to be equal to 18. Same thing, subtract both sides by four, so that's one quarter A is going to equal to 14, multiply both sides by 4 and we get a is equal to 56 okay. when one side of an equation is a fraction with with more than one term in the numerator you can still undo division by multiplying each side by the denominator so what they're talking about here is if we have a term with more than one thing in the numerator, okay? And if we were to write this out, we could write it like this, both x over 7 divided by 3, okay? So if you're thinking about order of operations, you could see, well, I should maybe add 7 to both sides because that's subtraction, but that's not true because this term right here in the top is inside parentheses, right? That's what it means when we have two things over a division bar. It means both of those are divided by three. So let's rewrite this in the, whoops, x minus seven over three is equal to negative 12. The first thing I want to do is now not parentheses, it's the division, okay? So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to multiply both sides by three, okay? So when I do that, those two things cancel out, and now I have x minus 7 is equal to negative 36, negative 12 times 3. Okay? And now I can add 7 to both sides to give me x is equal to negative 29. Okay? So we want to get rid of the 3 on the de in the denominator first, and because denominators mean division, Right, we get rid of it by multiplication. Let's try a got it problem. Okay. We'll look at this, we'll look at part B in a second. What is the solution of six is equal to x minus two over four? Let's rewrite it. Six is equal to x minus two over four. I see that we have four in the denominator. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by four and get 24 is equal to, those cancel, 
x minus 2, add 2 to both sides to give me 26 is equal to x. Okay. Part B. Oops. Part B. Write the right side of equation in part A as the difference of two fractions. Solve the equation. Did you find the equation in part A or the rewritten equation easier to solve? Okay, so let's see. So let's take our first our first question. X minus 7 divided by 3 equals negative 12. And let's write, rewrite this as the difference of two fractions. So that would be X over 3 minus 7 over 3 is equal to negative 12. Well, now if I do this, again, I haven't made the equation any simpler. I've made it more complicated, but I can still solve it the same way, right? So I can first, now that it's split into two fractions, now I have division right here and subtracting a fraction right there, I can add 7 over 3 to both sides. Well, plus 7 over 3 gives me x over 3 is equal to negative 29 over 3. And now I can multiply both sides by 3 to give me x, those cancel, those cancel, is equal to negative 29, which was the same answer as my first part. But I don't think it was any easier. I think this method right here, changing it into two fractions, makes the problem more complicated and thus a little harder. So I would stick with the method of multiplying first. Okay, so. Oh, I think it's good to page. So we're going to look at something called deductive reasoning right now. Okay, so when you use deductive reasoning, you must state your steps and your reason for each step using properties, definitions, or rules. In this problem, we're asked to provide the reasons for each step using deductive reasoning, right? We have to justify each step. You'll see this a lot more as you get to geometry and you do something called proofs, okay? So let's rewrite, let's make a nice little T table here, okay? And we're going to have our steps there and our reasons over there. Okay, so first thing is negative t plus 8 is equal to 3. Okay, what's that? That is the original. Okay. Right, that's the original equation. <laughs> Okay, in geometry, you'll look at that and you'll say that's the given statement. Okay, I think we know how to solve this already, right? But now we just have to actually write out all of our reasons, write out all these steps. So the first thing is I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Okay, and when I do this, I have to actually give this property. Okay, so if you subtract something from one side, if you subtract an 8 from one side and you subtract an 8 from the other side, that is the subtraction property of equality. Okay. Next, we have to actually subtract. So those two cancel, and we're left with negative t is equal to negative 5. <laughs> And that is subtraction. Okay, so this is just saying that we are allowed to subtract a from both sides. This step is actually doing it. Okay, so next I can rewrite this as negative one times t is equal to negative five, and that is the multiplicative property of negative 1, which says that if you have a negative in front of a number, you can change it to negative 1 times the number. Next, we can say negative 1t over negative 1 
is equal to negative 5 over negative 1. And I need a little more room here. And that is, well, we're dividing both sides by negative 1. So that's the division property of equality. And then finally, we actually divide by negative 1, and we have t equals 5, which is division. Okay? So basically, like I said, like a, ge like a proof, like a geometry proof, every step that we do is justified by a property that we've talked about previously. Now, Technically, you are doing this every time you solve a two-step equation, but we don't necessarily have to write out every single step, and we don't have to uh, give the reason, right? If we were just going to solve this, uh, solve this problem in a normal method, we would say that negative t plus 8 is equal to 3. We would subtract 8 from both sides. Negative t is equal to negative 5. Divide by negative 1. And we would say t is equal to 5. Okay, So as long as you understand that each of these steps comes from a, f a grouping of these properties right here, then we can solve any two-step equation that you see. Okay, So let's make sure we know how to do everything. Solve each equation, right? I would add 12 first, then divide by 5. For number 2, I would add 3 first, or subtract 12, and then divide by 5. Here, I would add 3 and then multiply by 7. Here, the first thing I would do is multiply by 4 and then add 1. Here, I would add 4 and then divide or multiply by negative 1. Junior class is selling granola bars to raise money. They purchased 1,250 granola bars and paid a delivery fee of 25 bucks. The total cost, including delivery fee, was $800. So we would set this up like 1250 times the number of granola bars plus my delivery fee is going to be 800 bucks. So subtract 25 and divide by 1250 and you're going to get a fraction which is okay or a decimal so x is going to be 62 cents. What properties of equality would you use to solve each equation? What operation would you perform first? So I would use the addition property of equality and then the multiplication property of equality. Here I would use the subtraction property of equality. Here I would use the addition property of equality and then the division property of equality. Here, addition property of equality, then multiplication. Here, subtraction, then division. Can you solve the equation by adding 3 before multiplying by 5? And really, you can't because if you add 3 to both sides, really what we're doing is something like this. Okay? So I I didn't I can't cancel these two because this is being divided by 5 first. Okay? So what I've really done is change the equation to this plus, well, I have to have a common denominator to put two fractions together. So that's going to be 15 over 5 is equal to 9. And then, so that's d plus 12 over 5 is equal to 9. So that's how you would add 3 to both sides, and you didn't really do anything because our problem is still pretty much the same, okay? We still have two things divided by 5 and equal to a different number, right? So that didn't make the problem any easier, and it didn't help us solve uh, get D by itself at all. So when you see two things over a fraction, definitely do the multiplication first. And that is 2-2, solving two-step equations.